Hey, what's up guys? Ty Hansen with Eagle Outdoors here. Today is Friday, May 3rd, one day before the Wisconsin season opener. And I just wanted to run through some of the upgrades that I have done to my 2005 Bass Tracker Team 175. Some things that I think are much needed for this boat and uh, especially if you're going to run tournaments like, uh, like I do. Some of the club stuff and angler, Angler's Choice and whatnot. Check them out right here. Alright guys, so... Overview of the entire boat, it's a Bass Tracker Pro Team 175. And we're going to start from the front here. First thing that I really love about this boat, and uh, some people might think, ah, it's just a tongue. This swinger, uh, swing away tongue allows me to put it in this tiny single car garage where I had to take the prop off of my last boat to fit it in the garage here. This thing I can literally push my hand into the back, into the, into the garage here, uh, Undo that one pin, pop that thing out, fold it away, close the garage door. I don't have to try and uh, put it in diagonal or anything like that. Backs right in there perfectly. I have room to walk around the entire sides of the boat and uh, and do whatever I need to do, work on the boat and do all that sort of stuff. Uh, moving backwards a little bit, first thing I upgraded, I ended up picking up this Minn Kota Maxim 80-pound thrust trolling motor. Uh, I got a deal off of a guy on Facebook Marketplace for $180. Bucks. Um, we agreed on that, and I thought that was more than fair. This thing has run great this year already, and uh, definitely wouldn't be able to fight the current that I have uh, with the uh, the old 46 that I had on here before. Um, with that, I did have to upgrade to a 24-volt system, and we'll get to that in a minute. And then right away, I put a little down imaging, Humminbird Piranha Max uh, 4 on there, just to give me a depth. And uh, when I fish in a little bit deeper water, I want to be able to see the contour and stuff on the bottom. And uh, I like the down imaging one. It was 40 bucks more for the down imaging one. Um, so I could be able to see if it's hard bottom, soft bottom, stuff like that. Uh, I ran that down the trolling motor shaft. And of course you can see <laughs> I, fish, I fish a lot of rock. So that's uh, brand new, literally only been in the river like six times maybe ready this year and it's already got some scuff marks on there uh, from me and uh, so with that being said that's a direct wire uh, I don't I eliminated that plug there it goes through and direct wires to a few or uh, um, a breaker and uh, I've done all my trolling motors like that uh, protects it but I don't have any plug issues where if it rains or crows or anything like that I don't have to deal with that uh, so that's a much much needed upgrade there um, I have not put in the uh, deck extension right here yet. That's something that I want to do desperately, and uh, that's going to take a little bit more time with season opener. Uh, I don't know when that's going to get done, to be honest with you guys. Um, next upgrade after that gets done is going to be a uh, recessed trolling motor tray. Uh, I don't like how that thing moves around. Um, much more comfortable with the tray in there. And I think that's another upgrade that needs to be done here very, very soon. But we're going to hop in the boat here. We're going to go through some of the spaces that I've got here and how I kind of laid this thing out right away. This entire thing holds all of my plastics. Uh, if you guys have any tips on how to store plastics in here, they are divided up into, like, bags. You know, like, Senkos are all in one bag, tubes are all in one bag, flukes are all in one bag, creatures are all in one bag, craws are all in one bag. But... That's all fits in there. This thing actually goes like, like, way up in there. So, um, not an ideal situation if I gotta grab something that I might not use very regularly because it is it is crammed in there. Second thing, this is where I keep all my hard baits. So like that, I got jerk bait boxes, my jigs, uh, chatter baits, top waters, frogs, everything like that is all wedged in there. All my terminal terminal stuff fits in. This one right here, very easy to access. Pop that thing right out. All my crankbaits fit in that deep bass mocker box. Very convenient, very easy. Got this thing loaded up with everything I'm gonna need for the year. I buy everything in bulk in the spring, so hopefully I don't have to go chase hooks throughout the year. I do have some extra line, some extra swim baits. All my jig heads over there for swim baits are on that side. Fishing for smallmouth, gotta have that stuff at easy access. Over here, little just random grab bag got extra reels in here again some leader material 16 pound leader material got some dye in there sunglasses gloves stick some candy bars in there uh, <laughs> at least in the cooler months I do and uh, that's just a quick little access thing pliers go in there as well on the side here in the rod locker uh, I will be cutting 
that little notch out right there cutting that out so i can fit more rods in here otherwise it is fairly small but uh not too much in here right now i got all the rods out of the boat i do keep these anchors in here right now fishing the rivers uh it is a pain without spot lock but i got them daisy chained together right now so you can see them i literally pulled up one thing there it's because the heavy heavy current we've been dealing with this spring has been ridiculous they just need two anchors to grab uh, stepping back, I took out the middle seat there and uh, custom built this to fit in here so it was a step. So one, you're not tripping over the middle of the seat rest in the back. And this does flip up. It's pretty nice there. Tons of storage underneath the seats. That's where I keep my life vests. Um, I got the balance beam and stuff in there. Just easy, quick access uh, as far as uh, being able to grab the stuff that you need every single day. Going back to the console, we installed a Hummingbird Helix 5 side imaging unit. Uh, biggest thing was having GPS on here. We fished some pretty complex systems. Uh, or like the bay where <laughs> if you're off, you can be off by a long ways. So needed something to be able to get around. And uh, you're sitting close enough to this thing where it's it's fairly easy to see. It's not an ideal unit for side imaging and being able to see things crystal clear. But it is very handy to have. Um, sonar, GPS, down imaging, side imaging, all on there. I haven't done anything with the gauges or anything yet. Um, this boat starts and runs great. All the switches and stuff works. I ran everything through the fuse panel as well. So I don't have to deal with blowing anything, electronics or anything like that. Now, going back further, the other thing I need to do is install an onboard charger. There is literally no space for that thing. But... The other thing I like about this, it's got a fairly decent sized live well in here. Um, we had uh, seven fish in here last tournament, and it seems like they had plenty of room in there. So, uh, And that divider comes out in the middle, uh, so if I'm fishing solo, that thing is going to be coming out of there. Especially this next tournament for fishing on the bay, it is going to be coming out of there. Because hopefully I got 20 pounds on four fish. I don't really use these side spots. This is like a co-angler spot there. I just got a little rope in there to tie off to the dock and stuff in there now. And this one, I got my jumper cables. Just in case something does happen on the water, all my batteries are brand new as of this year. And uh, But anyways, you can see my charging system right here. <laughs> just got three uh, uh, just uh, smart charges linked up there. And I run that. That's been pretty good. We even plugged in overnight. It worked great. This was going to be the biggest hassle. And uh, you can see I did somehow manage to fit three batteries stacked in here. This is one thing that I could not find any information on. If you guys have a 2005 Tracker Team 175, you can fit three batteries stacked in here. Um, it was going to be a trial and error type of a thing. And these are all um, 27s. That I have wedged in here so uh, but it does link to 24 volts you can see the 27 um, DC there but these are all deep cycle marine batteries uh, I do run the ever starts they got a one-year replacement from Walmart there's the Minn Kota breaker that I got rigged up there for the uh, for the trolling motor it does have a 12 gallon gas tank in there which I find that, that this thing burns like nothing for gas I think they replaced the throttle and shift cables to an extremely long one, so I got an extra like two feet of cable there. So that's the only downside that I found with this boat is that. Now, <laughs> this giant pole sticking up in the air here. It is eight and a half foot tall and plugs right into this micro anchor spot right here. This is a power pole micro anchor, and this thing is one of the biggest upgrades that I put onto this boat right away this spring. Uh, I direct wired it right to the batteries. This plug goes right in here, powers that up. It does have the switches. You can see it hanging from the steering wheel there. And I do have the foot pedal switch up in front mounted on the dash. So just like a regular power pole, full size power pole, I double tap that button. It drives the spike right into the ground. And it does hold me in place pretty dang well. Um, using it last tournament was phenomenal. We got into a big group of smallmouth, and uh, I wasn't I, I wasn't having to deal with uh, you know dropping an anchor or staying on the trolling motor as I'm trying to unhook fish that were stuck with a jerk bait or anything like that. 
I do want to upgrade the prop on this thing yet, but for the river tournaments, this aluminum is going to be ideal. You can see the side imaging transducer, the compact side imaging transducer for the graph there. Uh, but some of the, those are some of the major upgrades that I've done, and uh, basically the rundown of how I laid this thing out um, to fish tournaments this year. I believe the 24 volt system upgrade for the trolling motor is the biggest thing, especially if you're in current a lot. I don't like keeping anchors in the boat, but um, I did not have the money to put spot lock or an Altrex on the front here, even though I've ran it in the last two boats that I've had, and it is phenomenal and something that I desperately wish that I had. But I got a little time yet to do that, and if I end up keeping this boat and running it, that's going to be going on here. But anyways, this is an awesome little boat. It's been in, kept in really good shape. I am the third owner of it. Uh, you don't need to spend a ton of money if you want to get into, you know, especially local bass tournaments. This only has a little 50 on here. Tops with by myself, I'm getting about 36 miles an hour with another person, it's 32. But running the rivers or smaller bodies of water and stuff like that, um, it's just fine. And actually, I fished out of Winnicani last weekend, which is actually a bigger body of water, the Winnebago system in Wisconsin. And uh, we got around just fine. So uh, I can't complain at all. Um, I did take sixth in that against some absolute sticks in our club that have bigger boats. And uh, it's not about the size of the boat that you're on or how fast you get there. It's how you fish and the confidence that you have. So if you guys have any questions on how you rigged anything like that. Um, oh, by the way, put brand new bunks on there. I almost forgot that too. That was uh, something that needed to happen. The last ones were shot couple little things yet to do for this year to make it perfect but hopefully you guys get a good idea and if you guys have a boat similar to this and you want to do some modifications those are the ones that i recommend doing first of all 24 volt trolling motor have to run or upgrade the system in the batteries back there to run it um electronics front and back you got to be able to read depth that you're in at all times water temperature is also key and then uh, that micro spike is another option. You could put a manual on there for a lot cheaper than what I did, but I found that used, again, on Facebook Marketplace for almost half of what a brand new one's cost. So I think that upgrade was definitely worth the investment there. But thanks for watching, guys. And uh, if you stuck around for the full, like, 13 minutes of this video, thanks. Uh, give me a thumbs up if any of this stuff helped you, and uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm going to be putting out a lot more content, especially uh, this spring. It's going to be big smallmouth time, and we're going to get after them. Thanks for watching, guys.